Hello, poetry lovers and poetry curious. Today I'm reading from The Voice That Is Great Within Us, American Poetry of the 20th Century, div uh, divided, yeah, edited by Hayden Carruth. Or Carruth, I don't know how you say his last name. So this actually has quite a long bio for Carl Sandburg, who was born in 1878 and died in 1967. And this um, anthology was published in 1970, so just a few years after Carl Sandburg died. It, it notes here his complete poems. It was published in 1950. Today I'm going to be reading to you Chicago very often anthologized poem by him. Um, and then maybe somewhere along the line I'll read you this fairly lengthy bio um, of Carl Sandburg. But first we'll get to the poem and various responses to the poem and we'll see whether or not I remember to go back and read the bio. Um, in any case, I will leave a link down in the description box to, uh, I'm assuming this poem is somewhere online, probably many places online, so I'll leave a link to the poem and to probably Wikipedia about Carl Sandburg. All right, Chicago. Hog butcher of the world, tool maker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads in the nation's freight handler, stormy, husky, brawling, city of the big shoulders. They tell me you are wicked, and I believe them, for I have seen your painted women under the gas lamps hiring the farm boys. Excuse me, luring, luring the farm, boy, farm boys. And they tell me you are crooked, and I answer yes. It is true, I have seen the gunmen kill the gunman, kill and go free to kill again. And they tell me you are brutal, and my reply is, on the faces of women and children, I have seen the marks of wanton hunger. And having answered, and having answered so, I turn once more to those who sneer at this my city, and I give them back the sneer and say to them, come and show me another city with lifted head, singing so proud to be alive and coarse and strong and cunning, flinging magnetic curses amid the toiling of piling job on job. Here is a tall, bold slugger set vivid against the little soft cities, fierce as a dog with tongue lapping for action, cunning as a savage pitted against the wilderness, Bareheaded, shoveling, wrecking, planning, building, breaking, rebuilding, under the smoke, dust all over his mouth, laughing with white teeth, under the terrible burden of destiny, laughing as a young man laughs, laughing even as an ignorant fighter laughs who has never lost a battle, bragging and laughing that under his wrist is the pulse and under his ribs the heart of the people, laughing, laughing the stormy, husky, brawling laughter of youth, half-naked, sweating, proud to be hog, -built, hog butcher, tool maker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads, and freight handler to the nation. Oh, it's very invigorating. <laughs> it's a very invigorating poem. It's a strong declaration. All right, so that's what, and that's what I like about it. It's like uncompromising pride in a poem. So that even though I have no particular opinion about Chicago, um, I at least know Carl Sandburg's stance on it. <laughs> and, um, and I think, too, it's relatable because there's there's always something in our lives that other people, that we are proud of or 
even and I don't even know if he was born in you no know, he was in Illinois but not in Chicago that there's something in our lives that we hold dear that um, other people can deride, pick at, and and we have chosen to love it despite its flaws. That it's that what it gives us is greater than the flaws, something like that. Because he acknowledges that he says, "I'm, I'm not going to pretend that there aren't some dreadful problems here." Um, but, you know, it does something for me. And it's big. What it does is big. It's got big problems, but its vitality is, is also big. So that's kind of what I like about it. And I, and I like, uh, I am somebody who's a bit of a sucker for listing. And he has some great listing. I mean, just a hog butcher for the world, tool maker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads and the nation's freight handler, stormy, husky, brawling, <laughs> city of the big shoulders. It's just, um, it's got tons of momentum. Uh, yeah, and I like the listing. I, I'm a sucker for a listing poem. Oh, and here we have our randomized poetry element is diction. Oh, we I know that we have some good diction in here. Um, so the whole working man. You know, we have butcher, maker, stacker, um, handler. It's particularly freight handler. So we've got this whole masculinity thing going on in the diction. There's a lot of testosterone in Chicago here. Um, even though we also seem to have some painted ladies and prostitutes, we've got big shoulders. We've got, again, along with the work, bareheaded, shoveling, wrecking, all these verbs, planning, laughing. Um, we've got fighters. Um, what else do we have in here? We have slugger. Yep, a lot of testosterone in here. We've got a sneer. The women and children don't seem to be doing too well here, except the painted ladies, um, because the women and children have marks of wanton hunger. Um, we have gunmen. So we've got a lot of work verbs. We've got a lot of physical male aspects, you know, uh, words. Um, we have bragging as well, and we have ribs. And so, it, you know, it comes across as very, like I said, masculine, working, muscular. We've got farm boys. Um, yep. We have flinging. We have toil. We have piling. It's very verby. We have singing. Um, so I feel like the language is emphasizing the diction is emphasizing being used to emphasize masculine vitality something's being done in Chicago something is being done and it's mostly being done by working men we're not ashamed to be working and they will laugh at you because why not be working because they're big and strong <laughs> um, okay so that was diction 
So now we're going to do this survey. Is this more thinking, actions, or observations? Well, we got all that verbing going on here. But it's almost more declarations. Um, So even though he's talking about what's being done, I'm going to put this more as observations because he's saying what other people are doing in this big city. So he just is observing this action. So it's got to be actions or observations. And I'm going to lean toward He's observing actions. <laughs> That's the way I'm going to make that happen. Is this poem more representative or abstract? I would say it's representative. And even though some of it is not exactly pretty scenes, I think he's intending it to be positive. So I'm going to say pleasantly representative. Um... You know, there are some negative things he he brings up here, but primarily he's trying to cast it in a good light. Which nonfiction category is this poem most similar to? You know what? I'm going to go with travel but it's more of a memoir type of travel because he's attempting to characterize a city. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. What fiction category is this poem most similar to? Hmm... So he's admitting, you know, to the crime issues. Um, it says, they tell me you are wicked and I believe them. They tell me you are crooked and I answer yes. Um, and brutal. So he's not denying any of that. But of course, he's emphasizing how much work is getting done and the physicality of all of that work. Um, it's funny because I, I almost don't feel like I can say contemporary literature because maybe it would have to be historical. Because the kind of painting of a picture of a time and place and talking about how, you know, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I feel like he's setting a very large, robust stage in terms of characterizing the city or place that something is going to happen. And while it may not have been historical in his time, in this time, it feels historical to me. Um, could you still put it in crime? I think you probably could still put it in crime. Um, in other words, casting the, the setting the stage, casting it in as positive a a way as you can emphasizing the positive but admitting the negative I could see this being a segue into um, maybe a page or two that gives the background of the detective 
within the city and his experiences and how he decided to rid Chicago of criminals or crime or streetwalkers or God knows what. So I could see that. I could also see in the nonfiction, I could see this as the beginning of something to do with journalism or history. I was just thinking something else and now I can't remember. Oh, um, social criticism or um, politics. I could also see this representing those things, except, except that it is so over-the-top positive. Um, again, even admitting the negative, it's just as praising... The, the city despite its flaws. All right. Um, so we did the fiction. What musical category is this poem most similar to? Well, what's big and bold? Ah, we could say musical theater. <laughs> I could see this being musical theater. I could see people dancing. It's not Oklahoma, but it's Chicago. <laughs> um, yeah, I could see it being some form of classical. Um, you know, some sort of very victorious sounding symphony or something like that. I think that's as close as I'm going to get to. Or big band. I could see it being big band. Very brassy. Very brassy. Maybe that's what I'm going to go with. Big band music. Is this poem obvious, subtle, or does it leave you scratching your head? It's it's extremely obvious. It is not trying to hide anything. Um, does this poem um, progress in a linear way or a discursive way? Um, I would say it's fairly linear, actually, the way he goes about it, because, I mean, he's essentially praising everything it does. You know, its masculinity as a city... And uh, then it, it's almost like a, the way an argument goes. You know, you introduce it, and then you address anybody's objection to it. And which he does at the, you know, with all of the, yes, you can tell me that it's wicked. Sure, yes, it's wicked, but I'm going to dismiss that. You dismiss these things. And then I'm going to get on to what is so fantastic about this. And he takes that all the way to the end, and then he repeats some of the beginning in the end. So I would say it's actually pretty linear, even though it's bringing in all kinds of things. It's a, but uh, And I would call it pleasantly linear. It's, it's not like it, at least to me, it doesn't get boring. To me, if it's something is linear, the way that it would become unpleasantly linear is if it's very predictable or boring. And I wouldn't call this poem. If you've read it a few times, it's a little predictable, but otherwise I wouldn't say that. It certainly sticks to its case. Maybe some people would find it boring. I find it pleasantly linear. <laughs> what sort of art style does this poem, um, is this poem most similar to? I'm going to say a mural. I don't even have that as an option here. But to me, this is like, it's a mural. It's a Chicago mural. 
um, in a word or a brief phrase, what would you say is primarily being communicated by this poem? Um, pride, pride in a, a place where you live or grow up, or pride in a place that, um, in this case specifically Chicago, Yeah, it's pride in a place that you've put some stock in, that you've lived in for a while and have gotten to know and appreciate its the good things about it, even if you know that it's not or far from perfect. But if I had to put it in one word, it would be pride. Um or perhaps celebration. I could even I could even say although I wouldn't say defensiveness, I could say defense because what he's doing here essentially by celebrating Chicago is he is defending it. So he's setting it up in a grand fashion in the first few lines with all of those names for it. And then he's like, you tell me this. Well, I'm going to tell you something you might not heard yet. <laughs> so there's some attitude in there. It's not just pride, but, you know, more like I'm going to show you. Uh, is that it? We've come to the end, except... I said I would read Carl Sandburg. Well, I'm going to need my other glasses to read this little print. So here we are about Carl Sandburg. The son of Swedish immigrants, Sandburg grew up in Galesburg, Illinois, a railroad town, where he attended school until he was 13, then dropped out and wandered for years through the West and Midwest, working at varied jobs. He served in the Spanish-American War and for a while attended college. Finally, he settled in Milwaukee, where he married, became a socialist and a newspaper man, and began devoting himself seriously to poetry. In 1913, he moved to Chicago. Harriet Monroe, founder of poetry, gave his work a prominent place in her magazine, in her magazine. Uh, where it attracted attention for its robust and Whitmanesque freedom. Two books, Chicago Poems, published in 1916, and Cornhuskers, uh, published in 1918, assured his reputation. During the 20s and 30s, Sandberg toured widely, lecturing, reading his poems, singing and collecting folk songs, playing his guitar. His two collections, The American Songbag, 1927, and The New American Songbag, 1950, are important contributions to folklore. At the same time, he became deeply interested in the life and achievements of Abraham Lincoln and spent many years in producing a multi-volume biography. In addition, his works include several first-rate books for children, the Rutabaga series, novels, autobiographies, screenplays, and much journalism. Sandberg's poetry was scorned during his middle and later life by the European-oriented critics of the time, and in part rightly so. He wrote too much and too facilely. I think this is hilarious. <laughs> to say that a poet wrote too much... Um, is is silly. Um, when I think of how many humongous, um, what have I got? I've got a humongous E.E. E. Cummings. I've got uh, a humongous, and many people have this humongous book of Emily Dickinson's, and you don't have people accusing them of having written too many po too many poems. <laughs> um, but some of his early poems have a fresh vision and incantatory vigor. That's, I think that's a good way of putting that. He has incantatory vigor that remain firm in style, attitude, and temper, 
temperament, he was closer to the young poets of today than most of them recognize. So, yeah, there's a point at which we slipped from biography to the editor, Hayden Carruth's um, attitude towards Sandberg. But he does have him in here. And he has several pages of him in here. So there we go. That's Chicago by Carl Sandberg. Take care, everyone. See you again soon.